Hey, this is Matt once again. What about you in the video? This is another paid request this time for Nate. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, what have you, uh, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And Nate wanted me to talk about the 1988 film Hobgoblins, which <laughs> I know he said in the message it's a guilty pleasure. This was just garbage. I mean, yes, it only cost fifteen thousand dollars. At least there's a goofball tone to it, so it's an eighties tone. It takes place in. It's filmed in the eighties, so it is that eighties charm, and there's a goofball tone to it. So it's nothing that gets me on supreme anger like I would with. The time machine I found at a yard sale, or feeders, or feeders two. It, but it's just a very poorly done movie. And you gotta blame Rich Sloan. He's the director, the writer, the producer, the editor, the DP. For all I know, he did the catering. And this got famous because it was on Mystery Science Theater three thousand. I didn't grow up watching that show. In fact, I've seen. A few miss only a few mystery science three thousand. It didn't seem like it was for me, because I just didn't think their jokes were that funny. But the the gist of the plot is it's a very 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 low budget rip off of Gremlins, among other movies, where the security guard is accidentally letting loose these creatures. And the creatures can create fantasies, and within the fantasy, you can die within the fantasy. And that's how the creatures kill you. Just starts off in this abandoned movie studio, and this young guard goes into the vault. But then when he goes in the vault, all of a sudden he's on stage with a microphone. You wonder what the hell's going on. It's not until later you find out that, oh, they create fantasies. Which I think is a very weird way to try to kill you. Because you're wondering, like, as some people have said... Why don't they just try to bite you, claw you, rip your eyes out? No, instead, I guess just to be different from gremlins and stuff, they create fan you know these fantasies. So this guy's on a stage with a microphone, singing to a crowd where there's nobody there. Even in this fantasy, there's nobody in the crowd. It's kind of a crappy fantasy. It's a crappy fantasy when you're singing and you're singing to an empty crowd. Does again, this is supposed to be his fantasy? But no, it's because the film was too cheap, even for the fantasy to have a full crowd. So just have nobody there. His fantasy is just he's singing to a crowd of, I don't know, invisible people. But he's dancing to nobody in the crowd, singing, or ready to sing, and somehow he falls off. Now, he wasn't pushed off. It wasn't like, okay, they got another piece of fantasy to push him off, or the creature comes and grabs him. No. He's just doing this, and then all of a sudden he trips on his two left feet, or he trips on his dick, I don't know, and he falls. And he falls what seems like three feet, but somebody busts his head open and dies. And then the older security guard, the non clue gulager <laughs> he looks, and then he just closes the vault... So, I guess, hey, we got a dead body. You think police are going to be like, um, yeah, this guy was working here, and where did he go? I don't know. <laughs> I guess the cops in this town don't give a crap. You just have a guy die and be locked in a vault, and no one's the wiser. And this poor old guy, the older security guard, he could barely run. I mean, he's trying to run, and it's... It's kind of like, I don't know, a snail in a motocross contest. You just can't keep up. You just this isn't running. Just trying. So then our lead character is this new security guard. And by the way, it goes like 30 minutes before you actually see the hobgoblins in the movie. Because we have our new character, our new, our lead, who's with his girlfriend, and there's a buddy who is always about hotlines, phone, 
Funty Dunty Sex Hotlines. And the Stummy Phone Hotlines. He's obsessed with them. And then this other girl whose army boyfriend, army guy, comes home and tells about how our lead guy is such a sissy. And then they start fighting. Because I guess the army guy's like, I know, something to prove. And they get these garden tools. And they fight for three minutes. And the fight's like, imagine you have a hoe and a rake and you do this. And each time, it's like the music's going, and the music will, each time they clack, the music like hits up. And they just, they keep clacked in the middle because they know if they try, they don't want to hurt someone, they don't want to actually hurt someone. So, what's the safest way? Just hit the middle, hit the middle, hit the middle for like three damn minutes until finally one brings the other guy down. And then the army dude is victorious, and the girlfriend's like, yay! So they both go back to this van, and the van starts to rock in, and each time it rocks, you hear this cartoony boing, 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 boing. I can see some people enjoying this in the so bad as good way. Ridiculous, it's silly, it's stupid. There are films I've enjoyed of that nature as well. But this, like, the acting isn't that good. The pacing is kind of, not even kind of, fairly boring. And you think, man, I mean, you could watch Gremlins, you could watch Gremlins 2, you could watch Ghoulies 2. Hell, you could watch Ghoulies 3. Which I thought I had over here. Yeah, you could watch this movie instead. Which is, you know, this is a DVD-R. You could watch this instead, which is more fun. How Ghoulies 3 is, for comedy, is Beverly Hills Cop compared to Hobgoblins. So the new guy, you know, the, the his, his girlfriend says pretty much he's a wimp. You're not man enough. So he goes to his job as a new security guy. He saves the old guy from this robber, fires a gun in the air. Old guy tells him to do something. The new guy looks around, opens the vault, lets the creatures go accidentally. We don't see the creatures leave because that'd be too much money. And then, boom, we see the creatures in a golf cart. I mean, it was pretty much a golf cart. Driving in all their glory. They look like the creatures on the poster. They look like hand puppets. A bunch of emaciated dairy buzies. I don't know what to call them. It's just they look like hand, hand puppets. They can barely move. They're barely any sense of mobility. They can't move jack squat. <laughs> so I don't know what to tell you. And instead of being a not liking bright lights, they gremlins, they're attracted to bright lights. And then the old man tells the guy all oh, a flashback where the aliens arrived and looked like a hubcap. It was like someone's hubcap they found at the junkyard. And apparently, again, fantasies, they create fantasies and people believe in them and they could die within those fantasies. When they attack people, it's pretty much attack people, and the people, they're doing all the work. They're wiggling around as if they're having a, you know, epileptic seizure. While just having the, the puppet on there. There's no gore. It's a very cartoony, on purpose flavor to it all. With the, the sound effects and the goofy shenanigans. It's trying to be a, wall, a live action cartoon. There's literally a character who jumps a grenade, but instead of blowing them up, sets them on fire. Because I guess apparently grenades in this universe, when they feel like it, will just set you on fire. But then when you're fully on fire, and all that's left is your shoes, you'll come back at the very end, and you just have 
crutches and a cast. That's the kind of movie you're dealing with. And it, some of that goopball tone kind of made me simmer down a little bit with like, like this movie obviously doesn't take itself seriously. And why the hell am I trying to take this seriously? So, it's like this director or people kind of know this is a bad movie. Maybe they didn't know how bad. But if that's the case, then push more with the goof tone. Push more with the comedy. Push more with the crazy insanity. Try to get more creative with it. <clears throat> it doesn't help that the actors really aren't up to par with the shenanigans. That the, there was no budget. It's a $15,000, give or take. The fantasies, the guy who lights the phone hotlines, imagines the girl that he's been calling... And she invites him to a car. They drive somewhere. She tries to push him off a cliff. Which fully showcases how the creatures need to rethink their... Operandus. Their memento moris. They need to rethink how the hell they do this stuff. They need to think their MO on how to kill people. Because if you're creating a fantasy and the fantasy can barely even move the car, then you're fan you know you need to fix your damn fantasy making abilities, hobgoblins. Come on now, shape up or ship up or shit out or sh fuck up. So our lead guy is able to smack the creature a bit, and then the fantasy girl fades away. Gets the guy out, goes down, then the, the, the car ultimately does go down the hill. I guess to get their one, one of their only big moments in the film. Where, oh, we take a car, roll it down the hill. Blow it up. Although that's more than that, what was done in Feeders and Feeders 2 and some of these other movies. So, which is sad. And that's the thing, like, I, I've i seen, sadly, much worse movies. Like, Sound of Delaney 3 is a much more boring movie than this. At least the goopball tone give me something to talk about. Like, the rake fight for three minutes, or the weird sound effects, or the badly done hand puppets. At least it gives me something to talk about. And at least it's only an hour and 20-some minutes. At least it's trying to have... Because in the 80s, it was a bit of nostalgic charm just with the way things are shot and looked back then. As opposed to if you're trying to recreate it now. Pretty much the finale takes place in this club called Club Scum. Where you have one lady with a Marge Simpson haircut. You got a crappy punk band singing their entire damn song. I'm like, I don't care about you song. Go away. Okay. Give boy G George and sing Karma 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 Chameleon instead. Get off the stage, punks. Do your dishes. And then the army dude gets into a fantasy. Oh yeah, the, the guy's girlfriend got into a fantasy. And her fantasy is to be slutty on stage but I say slutty on stage but you don't see any of the goods you don't see nudity you don't see any really sexy times sexiness so even that's pretty tame the army dude fantasizes that this captain or such of his gives him all these guns and grenades and uzis or whatever machine guns he starts blowing up the bar but I say blow up the bar as in he throws a grenade and the grenade has about as much power as a firecracker. And what do the aliens even want? Like sometimes it's like, okay, they don't make the guy who looks... This guy from the band... No, the not the band. This guy who's like the MC or whatever. And the, the girl with the March Simpson haircut make out. Why are the creatures making these two make out? For what purpose? I don't know. The guy was kind of the... I don't know if he's the owner, the bouncer of the bar, the club, whatever. 
is an actor named Dwayne Whitaker. I think he's the guy that owned the shop at the end of Pulp Fiction, who Bruce Willis kills with a sword. He was also in Feast and From Dust Till Dawn 2. He's been a lot, he's a character actor, been a lot of other stuff. I think he's been in some Rob Zombie's movies. There's a point where a girl's hitting the guy, and each time she's hitting the guy, you get these boing, boing, boing cartoon sound effects. The, the fantasy military guy throws a grenade, and the army dude jumps on it. But again, it doesn't blow... You think he blows him up, but then he's just on fire, stands up, and is on fire. Good fire, Dad, for a low-budget film, to be fair. I mean, for a $15,000 budget, to have a whole guy on fire top to bottom, that's actually pretty crazy when you think about it. I mean, how much was that guy paid? I don't put you on fire head to toe, and we only have a $15,000 budget. I'm like, no, you're paying me $15,000 at all for me to put myself on fire. <laughs> but apparently not. What'd he get, a... Happy Meal McDonald's? What the hell did he get paid for this low budget? But anyway, you think he's dead. And I guess because of the explosions, you think that most of the creatures... Well, I guess maybe some of the creatures are dead. But then, they drive back and there's the... They drive to the abandoned movie studio... And the lead sees the guy that tried to rob the old guy near the beginning of the film. Only he's got nunchucks. Why? I just... Hey, did you do something? You ought to use nunchucks. Okay, use a little bit of nunchucks. Throw them in there. And then non clue Gulliger shoots the... Shoots a creature... This is after the, the the punk guy. Well, the lead guy does fight this punk. Because that's why the girlfriend now likes him. Oh, he's a man. He stood up for me. And he f stood up for himself. And he was able to fight. And then the, the punk gets a gun. And the old man shoots the creature. And then the punk fades away. Because he's a fantasy dead. The old guy was able to get the creatures in, and he rid it with explosives. Why it took him this fucking long to think of that idea to put goddamn explosive in that building? I don't know. Took you this long to figure that out to do that? And practical explosion of these windows. Like I don't know how they did that for low budget. At least something happens. And then the, the army dude comes by alive, not on fire, not burned. He has a, some, He's on crutches. And then they go back to the, the van to boink some more while the lead is with the, his girlfriend. And the f guy's like, hey, old dude, you got a phone? So I call another hotline. So it's very silly, goofy, cartoony. I mean, none of the lead characters die. There's really not much of anybody that dies except the guy at the beginning. There's no gore. There's no nudity. The hobgoblins, they barely move. It just... It doesn't really give you much of anything in terms of exploitation or fun factor. Maybe you laugh at sort of maybe the cornball performances, but I mean, there's plenty of other movies that have done that better. And just really forgettable movie, if I think about it. Kind of a forgettable film that I know I saw this film once before. I didn't remember a damn thing about it. Now I know why. I mean, hell, Critters 3 and 4, Ghoulies 2 and 3. Munchies, I mean munchies for crying out loud. Munchies with Harvey Torman is more memorable than this. 
Munchies. I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is better than Munchie, the family film. But, damn. What about the first Ghoulies? I'm not a fan of the first Ghoulies at all. And honestly, I hate that movie about as much as this. In fact, I'd probably rather watch this. Just, the first Ghoulies, I think, is overrated. I thought it was really boring. And I never liked the first Ghoulies film. So I'd probably rather watch this than the first Ghoulies. But just because the first the first Ghoulies I thought was even more boring. This at least, it kind of had a cartoony vibe that was consistent. While the first one, I don't know what the hell I was trying to do. That's why I thought Ghoulies 2 and 3 were much better. But yeah, Hobgoblins... If I want to see Goblins, I'll go watch Ernest Dear Stupid. <laughs> Hell, Troll 2 is at least funnier and more memorable in its badness. With, oh my god. That's more f funnier. You can't piss off Spitali. I won't allow it. Which I know is called Troll 2, but yeah, it's Goblins. I, again, it... That's more hilarious in his badness. This is more... Whatever. Kind of that reaction, whatever. 